there's more GPU flops shipping this year than NVIDIA shipped their entire history for the data center. The moment you even put an order in, even if TSMC started working on it immediately, you would not get a chip out for three more months. You know, call it four or five, uh, five, six months between, you know, when an order is placed and you can actually have it installed in your data center. TSMC actually does have slack capacity for making the chips. They don't have uh, slack capacity for putting the chips together with the memory. So I'm here with uh, Dylan Patel. A lot of people at ICML have recommended I talk to you about your blogs and analysis. What's your background in, in hardware? Like, how did you get into this? Like, I started consulting on the side of my job, Hush Hush, in like 2017. And then I went full time in 2020. But I got bored in 2021 and I started a newsletter, right, on Substack. And then that newsletter's done really well. Semi analysis, right? Yeah, semi analysis. And so we, we actually post mostly about hardware and some, a lot of times AI hardware as well, but a lot of times uh, hardware. Uh, but, you know, from time to time, you know, Turns out systems people know a lot about architecture of what's running on their system, right? So that's sort of like the the back end into like, uh, you know, and, and, and trying to figure out what infrastructure is needed, you know, how much networking do I need versus compute versus memory bandwidth? What's the, you know, what's the order of operations and and how are things scaling? So what, how does that influence hardware design? Um, and that's important for like my business itself, right? Not, not the newsletter, but the business, right? Like is understanding these sorts of things and the cost of running these uh, models. Business? Uh, is, is consulting for semiconductor industry, right? So that's that's the business. And so, uh, and, and and I'd been doing that, you know, before I started the newsletter. And then the newsletter's fun, right? And it's it's grown a lot and has a lot of people reading it. So that's fun too. What's the like last news of the best moment? So I, I've had a lot of like um, shortages in like GPUs. Like it's, it's harder and harder to get like GPUs in, in, in clusters like 800 or 800. Do you have like any insights on this? Like what's the demand and offer and, and, and it's kind of... Yeah, I mean, uh, since November, people have been wanting GPUs and that's like accelerated this like money has flooded in, right? Like, uh, you know, Meta sort of started investing heavily in GPUs and you know, more so like August last year, but they really, really accelerated in like January, February. Was there anything that like caused them to accelerate? Well, of course, like there's the chat GPT moment partially, but also like there's a lot of stuff around the recommendation networks and the infrastructure they were using there that they needed to update. And so there's there's multiple things, but like you, you, know, you amalgamate that across every company, right? Like, okay, that's when Meta started investing. Well, Google, you know, started investing at this time. And then of course they don't buy so many GPs, they mostly buy TPUs, but uh, that that production capacity is actually very similar from uh, TSMC, um, you know, Coos and, and the and five nanometer for two PV5, so you're all saying that sort of stuff. Then TSMC was like bottlenecked by like the not having enough workers and, and the, 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 the price went up. It's not really, it's not really uh, TSMC's uh, workers, right? It's, it's, I mean, you know, the, the thing about hardware is so different than software is that it takes, you know, the moment you even put an order in, even if TSMC started working on it immediately, you would not get a chip out for three more months, right? And that's if the chip was already designed and they already you already submitted the design with TSMC, and that's a multi-year process, right? Like, so, so you know, and then taped out and all the bugs were fixed and so, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, it's a multi-year process uh, for even just getting a chip that you've designed, uh, you know, or started to design into production. And even once it's in production, if you want to increase orders, it takes three plus months to just get the chip back from TSMC, let alone put it into a server and then get that server installed in a data center. Right? So it's a, it's a multi-month process, right? And where software is like kind of, you know, you think about it being like snap of the finger, right? Especially like a lot of the open source stuff mm -hmm. we see is like, yeah, some guy was working all night and he uploaded this and now another person's working all night and actually, oh, now another team of people mm -hmm. is working all night. And it's like everyone's night is different. So then they all worked all night. And so it's like, you see things iterate really rapidly, but in hardware, you know, it takes you know, call it four or five, uh, five, six months between, you know, when an order is placed and you can actually have it installed in your data center if it got worked on immediately. Now, the other aspect is like, yeah, there's some slack capacity, right? I mean, you think about manufacturing, you you make a massive capital uh, investment of billions and billions and tens of billions of dollars, right? Um, and then you start running the production, but then it's like, oh, well, I want more, more chips of this kind than you have production of that kind, right? So it's like, okay, well then, now I need to expand production. So that's mm -hmm. the thing that's going on. And we've done a lot of work, you know, uh, in that, right? Like the equipment supply chain, right? There's there's about 30 to 40 different equipment suppliers in the supply chain for uh, not just not just like making the chips, but actually just packaging them together, right? And like that's one aspect, uh, uh, you know, that we've been following. And that's actually one of the biggest bottlenecks is uh, because, you know, you, you, they actually, TSMC actually does have slack capacity for making the chips. They don't have uh, slack capacity for putting the chips together with the memory. Uh, with the HBM memory. So that's like actually the biggest bottleneck for them. Um, where, where does the memory come from? Uh, the memory comes from SK Hynix and Samsung. Uh, Korean companies, they dominate the memory market, SK Hynix especially. Uh, and so uh, that's, you know, that is another aspect like increasing production for, right? It's a different part of the supply chain. And, and there's many parts of the supply chain, right? Like power supplies and cables and optical cables and all these sorts of things like 
uh, you know, need to harmoniously come together. And each of those has a different supply chain with sometimes different, a lot of times different equipment um, and uh, different lead times. And hey, this, you know, takes three months. And hey, I have access capacity uh, supply here. And so inventory, so I can sell you some more. It's like, Everyone has to balance their supply chain and move up. But the the long and short of it is like that there's actually a humongous increase in GPU capacity, right? There's there's more GPU flops shipping this year than there have that NVIDIA shipped their entire history for the data center, right? Like that's how much they're shipping this year more. Uh, one, you know, part, part of that's off the back of the H100 being, you know, you know, call it four to five times more flops. Uh, but also part of that's off the back of like there's more units too. Um, so, but it's just that so many people want more GPUs, right? Um, and if you go to like Bay Area companies, right? Like you talk to like all these Bay Area companies, Inflection and Meta and, and all these and and, Go- and uh, sorry, my, and OpenAI and all these, everybody's bragging about how many GPUs they have. And it's it's really cute. Like, and it's like, and it makes sense, right? Like researchers want GPUs to run their experiments. Yeah. And so it's funny. Yeah. He's like, he's like, yeah, comparing like how much money you make, he's like how many GPUs you have. Um, do you think like the like increased demand in GPUs will in, and like you know the stock of Nvidia going up, etc. Like all this money in the in the market will turn the like whole process like more efficient. Like there, there will be like competitors like producing more things, and then like at the end, or, or, or do you think like in the next three years it's still going to be like Nvidia, TSMC, and like all these like the same players making a bottleneck by some small things? Um, no, I mean like production is increasing rapidly, right? I mean like. Uh... You know, NVIDIA is going to ship over a million uh, H100s plus H- A100s this year, right? Like, and that's that's a lot of GPUs, right? I mean, you think about how many GPUs GPT-4 was trained on, and it's like, well, actually, like, yeah. like, And then there's multiple labs that are going to have enough GPUs to train something. You know, not, not to say they have the skill set, but, uh, you know, t- to say they have enough GPU horsepower. And presumably they have enough skill. They have a lot of the skill set because it's a lot of people from Google and OpenAI who have left and created these companies. But, um you know, I, I do believe that there's going to be, you know, five to seven companies that will have a GPT-4 size model, at least, right, in terms of total flops, right? It could, it's going to have a slightly different architecture, maybe maybe fewer t- parameters, more tokens, or vice versa, right? You know, there's there's a lot of innovations to do on the software side as well. But uh, there's like five to seven companies who will have a model like, you know, that is that meant many you know, sort of GPU hours or compute uh, flops, uh, G- GPU flops uh, in the next, you know, year. Uh, of the quality of GPT-4, so it's like, or or of the size of, right? And then quality is is beholden to a lot of other things. I'm not sure like how how much you believe like we could get like human level AI in this like decade, but um, assuming we we go like to this level by just like, scaling models up, like we can just like scale the models like 1,000 times, and 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 we get something like close to human level across like many different tasks. Do you think hardware will, will be like the bottleneck? We'll have enough money to like do those kind of things, but we will just like don't have the like. No, I think I think so. Supply I think, chain to do it. I think um, you know, there's so many GPUs being shipped this year and next year, and the if I, I look at the supply chain and uh, the amount of GPUs that are going to get shipped next year is freaking crazy. Um, and uh, at least that's what the supply chain is preparing to do. Now, of course, is there demand for it? But I think you know, yes, we can just scale another thousand X from GPT-4, right? Um, and that is like something humanity can easily do. Does that deliver? You know, I mean, we've seen you know, sort of. You know, I like to joke like transformers are the most like capitalist thing that's ever been invented because you just throw more money at it and it gets better. Like log linear, like scaling is like perfect, right? You look at like these scaling laws. It's like, yeah, it actually just keeps getting better. So I don't know if like, do we run out of data? Well, then we just go multimodal and that's more expensive on compute. But like, I don't see why, um, you know, multiple companies, this is OpenAI, Meta and multiple other companies. Why don't they have, you know, why, why isn't their next model trained, you know, our next mega model, you know, maybe in the next year or two get trained on a system that's, you know, 125,000 H100s, right? Which are 3x faster. Uh, so it's like, okay, well then that's, that's you know, that's, that's, a, that's a, you know, 100x, you know, or 10x, whatever. And maybe they train it for longer. You know, I think, I think you can continue to scale and hardware will get better. And the ability to build a larger and larger supercomputer because the economic, uh, you know, benefit from these massive models is getting better. So I think, I think people won't be bottlenecked by hardware. Uh, more so about like, the ingenuity of putting them together and creating software that can scale and all that sort of stuff and, and work on, you know, I don't think people are going to use dense models like that's stupid. Uh, but yeah, it's more like, um, like the demand is, is not like linear. Like if, if, if I buy like a million GPUs from Nvidia, they will probably like not one because they want to keep their, uh, some of their offer to like other, other players. Like 
one company can just like buy all the GPUs from 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 Nvidia. Well, they, yeah, they don't allow that. Of yeah, course. they don't allow that. For that of course, so you, so you, you you can only like buy like let's say ten percent or something without the price going going up too much. Um, well, I don't think they're raising the prices. They're just literally saying we don't have allocation, and if you want more GPUs, then wait till we have built more. Right, like you know they're going to build about four hundred thousand GPUs and and sell about four hundred thousand H one hundreds in Q three, right? And like okay, like you know plausibly Meta is going to buy like. 30,000, 40,000 of those, right? And OpenAI is going to buy like 30 or 40,000 of those through Microsoft and Microsoft for their cloud will buy another 10, 20,000, right? But like, you know, uh, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure they want more, but like, you know, it's like, you will, NVIDIA is going down their whole customer list of the big customers. Like, yeah, well, I want to give this many to this person, this person, this person, this person, and next quarter you can buy more, right? And I think that's sort of how they're playing the game and uh, making sure nobody gets all the GPUs because they want AI to sort of be democratized because, or not democratized, but they want to have many customers to sell their GPUs to, right? Um, so it's actually in their success for like, I mean, this is why they invested in like inflection, right? Is like, oh, well, I want a comp- I know I want another AI lab who's buying GPUs long term. Who invested in inflection? Nvidia did. Uh, mo- many other people did as well, but Nvidia did, yeah. And like, it was like, oh well, who's these random this random startup? Like, do I want to get them twenty two thousand GPUs this year? Well, actually, yeah, it's better to you know take five thousand away from Meta and five thousand away from Microsoft and five thousand away from Amazon and give them to these guys because that creates another competitor, right? And yeah. so I think they, they are also playing that game. I think that they also like raised like something like more than a billion dollars or something. Yeah, 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 of course. And, and NVIDIA was one of the investors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think I ran out of questions. Do, do you have like any last message to the Twitter or YouTube audience? Something that people, that you repeat to people and you want to like have them learn or something? Uh, yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're just interested in uh, learning more about semiconductors, I think they are the most complex thing in the world. Uh, you know, AI is awesome and I, I love uh, AI, but... Uh, uh, semiconductors are, you know, in, infinitesimally like complex. There's millions of people working on things, and each person is in such a niche of the industry. It's it's amazing, like how much you don't uh, understand, even after having worked in them for a long time. So yeah, like I'd say, hey, like like figure out like working on semiconductors it doesn't necessarily need to be like you know chip design. It can be like it could be aspects of production. It could be aspects of uh, design, you know, um, manufacturing and many things. But yeah, so like. Check out his guy's blog, uh, Simeon Elizabeth is great. Cool. And hire him for consulting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>